Brenda. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello, Eric. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Eric is very, very tired. I wouldn't say. I'm tired too. It's right. 2 a.m. over here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. I love my Oh, how are you doing? Hello. How can you do that? Are you Jewish, Justin? Oh, no, 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 no. It's from Star Trek. Well, I know, but the fact that you're able to do it, Eric, can you tell from a Jewish perspective? Uh, well, so Leonard Nimoy was Jewish, and he introduced it into Star Trek. It's actually the priestly blessing. Um, ah. Uh, and but the fact that Justin can do it, it's interesting, right? I would not say it's not interesting, yeah. Um, so how many people are here? Well, uh, five and... Um, oh, here, I put it on gallery view now. And I see um, Marlene. Hi, Marlene. Hello. Raduka. Hi, Raduka. Hi. Max, hi, Max. Raphael, hi, Raphael. Eric. Justin, hi Justin, Tay, hello Tay, and Brenda, hello Brenda. Um, so, oh, Mars Dixon is here. Okay, yeah, so my name I shouldn't, I shouldn't start right away, because yeah. people are still joining us. Yeah, they're still Mars Dixon joined us. Um, and at some point, there will be Gavin that joins us, but he's more... Gavin that joins us. Yeah, well, you might you might just say whatever you want to say. <laughs> so, uh, what I wanted to say was welcome to this uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which is going to be this summer after school village um, class. Um, if you have ever played Dungeons and Dragons before or a fantasy role-playing game, raise your hand, please. So Three times a week. To do it. Some of you used to play in our old game, including Brenda, I used to play in our old game. How many of you have a character? Raise your hand if you have a character. I'm Mars, do you have a character? Mars has a character. Mars oh, oh, last time? Yeah, from last time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I so, started with yeah. character. What? Everybody has a character. Everybody knows how to play. So we're going to start like like we're going to start. Hey, what, what about Ma oh, Max, too? Max, you Max have a character. character from the Realms of Gold game. So he's going to bring his character, the wizard, I hope. And if he wants a different one, I don't know. So. I don't know if he wants a different one. If he wants a different one, he should say. No, I'll just use the one from uh, your campaign. Realms of Gold, yeah. Yeah. So this, this adventure is called the Monsterarium of Wantu the Mad. And we're going to start playing. Um, and last time when we did this class, we did a bunch of classes where we played. And then at the end, Mom, uh, we you have to get me my old. D well, you'd like her to get. It. <laughs> she doesn't have to, but you'd like her to. Um, you'd appreciate it if she did. Um, Mars, coming with you. So last time, we we. Um, we played, and then the last session, I taught you how to play and be DMs. Have any of you been DM since then? No. Oh, but one person, Maxwell Weidenfeld, you were a DM? I mean, I, yeah, I've, I've been a DM for the past. You've been a DM. Okay. Yes, I've cool. been a DM. Well, if anyone has any questions. I, I, have, I have an announcement because I, I really want them to hear this announcement. It's unrelated to D&D. &D. So I really, really would like you guys to 
show up tomorrow for the sustainability class, uh, which is, uh, there are two classes, zero waste and composting, okay? And basically, all of us as human beings should really hear these classes at least once in their lives, it's just for future, it's not even for future reference, it should be a second nature to most of us to um, have an awareness of our environment, how we can reduce literally waste anywhere from plastics to, to uh, waste in terms of food to have an awareness. And, and it's really gonna be entertaining. Uh, unfortunately, you're not all local, but with the people who are local, we provide worms uh, for composting and bins. <laughs> Uh, but come and hear it out. Uh, it will be neat to have some audience um, and uh, invite other people. And let us know if you invite other people. Okay. So that is like, is you get to do real life Dungeons and Dragons, where you actually save a planet, and the planet is this one. Yep. This is an opportunity to participate yes, Brenda. Yes, Brenda. in real life Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I started a character but we don't exactly know where my sheet is. <laughs> oh. Well, do you remember, uh, was it a second level fighter? I didn't really finish the character over the dragon bar. Oh, well then maybe we should quickly roll a new character for you if you'd like. Yeah, oh yeah. Would you like that? That'd be good. Uh, where, 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 why do I oh, question, what is it? Crawling around. Add some up. Justin, what are we? Okay. Well, uh, I, I just want to say I probably can't go to that class tomorrow because I have to go pick my cousin up. Oh, got it. Well, maybe we'll do it next time. There are two, one for, at 2 p.m., one at 4. Anyway, I am not holding you uh, hostages for this, okay? Just just for future reference. Okay, and yeah. That, we'll take it what, over. What character class do you want? Uh, a thief? A fighter? Yes? Me? Yes. Aren't you Brenda? Yeah. What character class would you like? Bard. A bard? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what kind of hit dice does a bard have? I don't remember. I'll have to, I'll have, I'll have to break out the book. Uh, in fifth edition, they have a D8. Oh, I don't know about fifth edition. We're going to look up bard in the player's handbook. Um, Maybe they don't even have bards. Oh my goodness. Wow, dang it. No, you can be a bard if you really want. I'm not gonna, you say it's a D8. If you say it's a D8, it's a D8. Um, that's odd though, because I do remember people had bards. I think the bard was only introduced in the Dragon Magazine. So anyway, you can be a bard um, and you have 16, um, uh, 16 hit points, all right? Okay. Also, I'm a dragonborn, too. I said that. So your second level, dragonborn bard. Um, what is your musical instrument? Oh, um, lute, I guess, or All right. something like that. Very well. Okay. So the way this campaign begins is you guys have gone fresh from your last adventure and you are traveling through the elf lands as evening falls. Off, oh, and, and you have horses. So you are astride your horses. Um, and as you're traveling, uh, giving uh, the horses something to drink by a stream, in the distance, you see a young, not that young, but you know, like a youthful elf uh, being pursued by a monster. The monster looks like a black puma, but it has two long tentacles coming from its shoulders. And it is chasing after this elf who is on foot through the fields of flowers and daisies. 
What do you do, Brenda? Um, sing, try to sing like a lullaby, like, sing like a lullaby like that. A lullaby? lullaby. Yeah, like a, a sleep song. A sleep song. Is that the idea? Is that the idea? Like who is he? Intended target of your sleep. What? Who are you trying to get together? Oh, uh, the puma. Yes. The monster. All right. And uh, Mars, what are you trying to do? Well, I'm just wondering where are my weapons? Like, you have your do weapons. I have? You have your weapons. Yeah, you have your like, weapons. You have your weapons. Yeah, but what are they again? I'm not sure. You're a dwarven thief? You're a dwarven thief? Yeah. Short sword. Yeah. Short sword. All right. I, but in my, my earlier adventure, I did steal a lot of daggers. Yeah, you have your daggers too. All right, I want to throw some, um, a dagger at the puma, All aiming right. for like, right. aiming for the head, actually. Yeah. All right. Head. All right. And and that, why the head doing? Um, just if we get, um, I, um, I'll if we get level spell, is, uh, invincibility. So I'll cast that on our team. The the sound is weird. I think yeah, everybody that's for everybody for me too. I think everybody has to mute themselves and then unmute yourself when you want to talk. Yeah, there's feedback loops that happen like that. So if everybody mutes themselves, then maybe that'll work better. Did you do it? Uh, does it work now? Okay. If it sounds good, go like this. Uh-huh. Good. Okay. All right. Um, so a second level spell is invincibility, so I'll ca cast that on our team. Invisibility. invincibility. All right. Now, no one's trying to defeat you. Um, I mean, just in case, I mean. Yeah. The, the, um, a very strange thing happens when you throw your dagger at the puma monster, which is, it misses it entirely, as if this creature is able to shift through time and space and avoid getting hit. However, the sleep spell does succeed and the creature falls asleep. The elf comes up to you and says, thank you for saving my life. My name is Prince Dharma Raja. Are you adventurers? Um, yes. Pretty much. Can you... Can you help me? Yes. He says, come. I will bring you to the elf village and right. explain to you about some of the things that have been happening recently. I would like my dagger back, so I'm just going to go over. Okay, over on my you can get the dagger back. Do you and actually, yes? just because I'm yes. feeling mean though, I actually chop off the monster's head just to be sure it doesn't follow us. All then right. Put my dagger away. Okay. You discover a strange thing about this creature, which is that where you think it is, it seems not to be there. Oh, okay. Sorry. Do you search? Nearby? You know what I what I try to do, it seems like it's always in front of where it should be. So I try slicing uh, like a 
little in front of it. In the process of searching through the fields of daisies, you find the actual location of the creature and you succeed in cutting off its head. It seems that this creature, where you see it is not where it is, but you're able to find where it really is. Okay, so you guys have defeated this creature. Everybody gets 45 experience points. Um, yeah. Remember, you all- Wait, do I start Wait, do I start over with experience points? Because I'm already at- you're all, you're all second level. So you're gonna, this adventure, you're trying to get from second level to third level, okay? Oh, so I'm not at 3,200. What, 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 Max, what, you're a, a wizard? Yeah. You're a magic yeah. user? Let me yeah. tell you where you are in terms of experience. Uh, this second level magic user, which is you, which is you, um, um, how many did you say you had? I had, three, I had yeah, three, three. Now you have what you have plus forty-five. Correct. Correct. Okay. Do you travel with Prince Raja Dharma? Okay. He leads you to. The um, the village of the elves. They live in tree houses up above the field of daisies and other flowers. And he says the following story. He says that recently a new flower started appearing in the elf flower fields, a red poppy. He drank a tea made from the red poppy. And that night he had a weird dream. And the dream told him about how to take a quest to a strange, mysterious hotel. And he went to the hotel and he slept a night in the hotel. And then he came back and he believed based upon the promises in the dream that he could have found great treasure, but he didn't find great treasure. And since he came on the first night, his aunt was murdered. And then on the second night, his older brother was murdered. And he doesn't know what's going on. Ever since he came back from this quest, elves have been being murdered. He wonders if somehow he has caused some evil to take place and he doesn't know why. What do you guys do? He says he'd like you to somehow figure out a way to protect the town from these mysterious murders. Maybe we should play detective? Play detective? All right, it sounds like a good play. Right. It sounds like a good play. Yes, yeah, someone is raising their yeah, hand. Someone is raising their hand. I go full out um, lead cutter and uh, go kill all of the I'm having difficulty hearing you. I go flout weed cutter and completely destroy all of the red plants. You destroy the red plants? Well, that would probably take you about a day, but you can. All right. So you're you're between parking. Okay. Max Wardenfeld, what are you doing? Max Wardenfeld, what are you doing? Um, there is a spell called message. Uh, I can mess with the dead with it. So I'm going to um, message um, one of the uh, person that, one of the people that got killed to ask um, who murdered them. Uh, they, he brings you to the funeral, um, barge 
of the elves where they are about to send his brother on a canoe and set it on fire. And you're able to message his brother. And he says that Prince Dharma Raja came in and murdered him in the night. I'm calling it the flower put a curse on him. I'm calling it right now. So what are you going to do? Could be a mind controlling flower. Mm -hmm. uh, we should probably, yeah, I think the killing the, all the flower things was a good idea. Now we got to figure out who planted them. Something. Maybe someone planted Maybe someone planted I have an idea. We tell them what happened and we say, Here's a good idea. In the night, bind yourself with chains as you sleep so that you don't go kill any more people. And we can watch him and see if and he tries to escape. And we can watch him and see if he tries to escape. Right. This is assume, yeah, this is also kind of assuming that he did, that this isn't a lie and he murdered them of his own will. Okay, so yeah. you guys, yes, Maxwell Weidenfeld. What's the um, question? It's possible that the flower um, is uh, a either um, a kind of a mind controlling flower, like he said, maybe like a um, psycho uh, psycho mind control where um, they can't stop them from doing what they're doing. So yeah, mind control probably. Okay, so you guys think that Prince Dharmaraja has been mind controlled? And you, um, have him tied up with chains in the night. Um, as night falls, a, he says, I wish you would untie these chains because I could really help everyone in this village, if you would just let me go. That sounds real sketchy. That sounds real sketchy. All right, we know the joke, don't listen. Yes, what do you, what yes. do you, what do you, what do you, uh, we say, all right, look, you're being mind controlled, so whatever you are, get out of here, because we ain't letting you go, so there's no point anymore. Well, what if well, I, what if I, what if you what, let me go and you all pointed your arrows at me so you knew I couldn't do anything bad? You know, we'll let you go all except your hands, which we will keep behind your back. And we'll let you walk around with no armor or weapons on or anything. And two of our people will accompany you. One, a magic user, one, someone who's really good at fighting or really sneaky or really agile or something like that. Oh, by the way, Gavin, welcome. Hey. Hi, Gavin. Uh, um, Gavin, do you, Gavin, have, do you have, have a um, character for Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, currently, I do not. I am going home from a basketball camp right now, but I'll be home in about 20 minutes and I can start making one there. Okay, well, you can just play through. What Do you remember what kind of character you like to play, whether it be fighter, thief, cleric, or magic user? I'm really, I'm really cool with anything. Okay, hey, everybody else in the party, this is Gavin. What would you like him to be? What do you- Not a rogue, we have too many of those already. Do we have well, any I guess I'll be a rogue. <laughs> Wait, do we have any clerics? You want to be a cleric, Kevin? Kevin? We don't have sure. any. Okay, so you're a second you're level, second level and you have 16 hit points, all right? And right now, everybody is involved. When did you join? Everybody is involved in a mystery of a mind-controlled elven prince. Okay. All right. So this one here, Maxwell Weidenfeld, what do you want to say? Um, I could use a spell to see if he's good or evil if he's going to do good or, or he is evil. Okay. Um, you cannot tell. He seems to be a mixture. Um, Neutral. He says, if you take, 
if you take off my my the chains from my hands, uh, you can all point your weapons at me, and I certainly am not going to do anything uh, untoward. Uh, untoward. Suspicious how you really want to those chains so badly. So badly. Also, like, why? Like, if like if we're not we're still not, kind of like guarding him, so there's really no point in just unchaining him unless he's just that uncomfortable. It's really, it's not much. The, what, too uh, much. Too much. Too much. Yes, Mars the dwarven. Yes, yeah, Mars the dwarven. Um, and I say. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to risk you being better than all of us at fighting agility and stuff and uh, giving us um, so much grief that we all end up with our heads severed from our bodies. As he's talking, you notice that his right foot is writing something in the dirt. Do you look at what he wrote? Yeah, can I read it, please? Yeah, can I read it, please? Yeah. He has written this. He has written this. Uh, there we go. Can we pause for a second? I want to refill my water. Sure. Thanks. Well, that's really telling. As he's writing, as he's writing, he writes the following. While he's talking, by the way, and asking you to release him, his foot is telling a different story. Do you guys have access to the chat? Yeah. So he, as he's saying, you should let me go, his foot writes the following in the dirt. Is that Elvish? It might be. If any of you guys have access to Google Translate, you might be able to translate it. I can translate it with a spell. I mean, I have the spell to translate any language in the D and D history. Mm. The character or has a magic book that yes, can translate any language. Okay. Oh no, it's just a spell. It just says. Uh, to you, to to play that spell, put this text into Google Translate. <laughs> okay. I have a player's handbook. I can just look it up in the player's handbook. I did. All right. Did anyone have translate? Uh, Google. I com? did. I did translate it. I'm going to put it in the chat if you want. Okay. Uh, detect language. English. Interesting translation. Not necessarily a hundred percent reliable. Mm. <laughs> take an oh, one. which one's the brother? It's the thing. Because it's my evil brother, but we don't know if that's good or evil. So 
It's that brother. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, what do you do? Uh, after, after morning comes, Prince Dharma Raja stops trying to convince you to let him go. And he says, what happened last night? I had the strangest dreams. Yes. What do you, who wants to talk? Brenda, what do you want to say? Well, I think maybe we should tell the police about something like this so we can make sure he's chained up because we're, he's chained up while we're gone. Because we're always I mean, we were obviously, we were obviously, how about we, Okay, everybody mute yourselves and then uh, unmute yourself. Uh, unmute yourself. How about we tell them, uh, the police, that Dharma Raja it happens to be slightly corrupt because he took blah, blah, blah tea. Um, no one should eat whatever the plant is called, whatever it is, and always have someone at his house to chain him up during the night and guard him. All right. That sounds good. You tell that to his father, his father of this village. Of this village. Um, Max Wardenfeld, what do you say? Isn't his brother his dead brother? And we talked to his dead brother and he said it was him. So does that mean his dead brother is evil? So that means he's not it? Or something? Uh, Brenda, yes. Maybe we should try talking to his the aunt that he killed too. Well, she's not around anymore because they burned the boat. Oh, well, still we should probably seek out Sybil at least. Okay, the elven thief. What do you want to do? Uh, I just wanted to say a quick warning in case I randomly leave that there's a storm outside my house and my power goes out very often. Where is your house? Canada. In Canada. Is it is it up in uh, Saskatchewan? No. Yukon? No. Oh, where then? Well, just kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but there's a lot of storms. Oh, where in Canada is, are you? Uh, near the border of Idaho. Near the Idaho border, I see. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. All right. Um, what is the party doing? Okay, I hope you're not... Uh, are you in danger from the storm or just in danger of losing your connectivity? Oh, just in danger of the power going out. I see. Do you have candles? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Um, I, I hope uh, if, if, uh, if, if the power takes you from us, we'll see you next week. Um, so now, what do you do? You've made these instructions to keep the Prince Dharma Raja um, chained up at night. And you've not you've cut down all the poppies, and what do you do? Yes, Brenda. Seek Sybil, or at least the hotel he said he talked about. Okay, well you don't know where the hotel is, but you can. They'll tell you that about two days away, uh, by horseback, there is the cave of the Sybil, uh, and you can go there. You we should go, go there. there. We should go. I don't really want to go to the hotel because that isn't that how he got corrupted and started killing people. If we no, it was, it was he got corrupted because he drank some bad tea. Yeah. But also, we don't know the um, the outcome if we find the treasure. He didn't find the treasure, so maybe something goes differently if we find the treasure. Maybe that's the quest. Yeah. Right. So you travel um, out of the daisy fields and tree houses of the elves into an area of volcanic rock where nothing grows and the sun is starting to set. What do you do? Because the horses kind of have to rest. We should look for like maybe a cave or something we can rest in. Uh, or make shelter. You, you find an, an outcropping of some rock that you could, if you want to, um, 
pitch your tent beneath and sleep. That sounds good to me. Are it's you taking watches or are you all sleeping at once? We should definitely take watches. So tell me the order of the watches. Okay. okay. I'll go first. Okay, first Brenda. I'll then, go second. And then uh, Justin, and then who? Max, and then who? Tay, okay. All right, you wake up, nothing troubled you in the night. Uh, you eat your um, uh, uh, food and drink your water, which you carried with you, and you travel along the ridges and cracks in the ground. By the way, it's starting to smell like rotten eggs. Um, did, were you raising your hand, Max, or you're simply stretching your palm? Oh, no, I'm raising my hand. Um, oh. if, uh, also, I have a spell. If we meet anything bad, um, or if you just want it, uh, we can, I can enchant your weapons to make them magic. Okay, bear that in mind. Um, all right. After about another half a day's journey, you come to the cave of the Sybil. Do you go in? Obviously, that's that's why we came. We all agree we're going in, right? Or do or do we want like half of us half of us to stay out or something like that? And yeah, maybe someone should stay what outside. Is that, what is that uh, bird? Guard. Oh, we have chickens. Uh, so one of them came up on our lap. What breed of chicken is it? Uh, that one's called an Americana. It lays uh, blue eggs, which is pretty. Lay cool. blue eggs, and do all Americana chickens play, play, play blue eggs? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. All right, and and does that one have a particular name, or are they unnamed? They're unnamed. It's an unnamed Americana chicken. <laughs> all right, uh, 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 only a few millennia separate them from the Vietnamese jungle fowl. Um, okay. So, so do you enter the cave of the Sybil? I would. Do you? Yeah, I would. Okay. Let's go. Entering the cave of the Sybil, raise your hand. So, is anyone going to stay outside? I'll stay outside. Okay. Wait. Staying outside? I would enter. Okay. Tay, Rob, Carl is staying outside and everyone else is entering the cave of the Sybil. Okay. You hear a tremendous whooshing um, as of um, some kind of weird gas coming up out of the cracks in the ground. And you can barely see anything. However, there are all sorts of little um, packages with gold and gems and little uh, figurines uh, made of gold and silver scattered. I move to say that I move to say that we plunder it. I don't think we should touch it because uh, say, have you come to steal from the Sybil? Maybe nope, just one answers. Also, they could also be uh, monsters because there are a bunch of monsters in the monster manual. Mimics. Like checks, um, rings, um, uh, coins, so they could all be monsters. Can't you do a spell to check? Because you're. Don't, you, oh, there... I can't. I can't or, uh, the, uh, yes, I can do a spell check to see if they're good or bad. You see a okay. being that stands um, about, about a head taller than a human, but more slender than a human, and it is wearing a toga. However, it does not seem to be a human. It seems to be a machine. And the creature says, the Sybil traveled to our planet as a punishment from the gods for telling their secrets. What question have you for the Sybil? And what sacrifice will you make to her for her suffering? 
By the way, you notice that in front of him, there's a large mechanical wheel set in the ground. Yes. Brenda. I would like to, I would like to ask who had, um, who planted the flowers? And for that, I sacrificed one of my scales. A scale from what part of your body? My tail. So now your tail will be vulnerable to attack. Well, technically it's just one, but okay. That's weird okay. flex, but okay. Uh, Does, unless anyone else wants to do something. Does anyone else have a question? For the scale, you will hear the prophecy of Wantu the Mad. Yes, Max Redenfeld. Um, I don't know what I'm going to sacrifice, but uh, uh you can also ask what secret uh that what secret they told, but I don't know what I'm going to sacrifice. <laughs> You can ask right. what told them. Maybe that will be important. We sacrifice your hair. That sounds like a smart thing to do. I can sacrifice my cap. I bought a cap when I was here. <laughs> yeah, I'll sacrifice one of my pieces of clothes, cloth. So. The, the metal creature says, "You, your sacrifice has learned, has earned you." the problem, but a sacrifice of a piece of cloth will not earn the second prophecy, which is the solution. Okay. Um, and to take the Sybil down, she will speak once or twice, and then I will return, and you must leave this cave. If you want the second prophecy, tell me what sacrifice will earn it. Oh my god. Uh I will sacro but does that have to be part of your hair? Does it have to be part of your body? Because if that case it should be your hair. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna I think they want like a body part of something. Um I know what I'm gonna do. Oh dang it, but I can't do that to a robot. Um I guess I'll sacrifice my hair, does the hair work? But if not, I'll sacrifice my ear. Who is speaking? Max. Max, all right, which ear? Oh my God, the hair doesn't work. Um, I'll sacrifice, does that have to be a part of your body or can it be like an animal or something? I mean, like you can sacrifice anything. The metal creature says, if you wish, a great gift, you must make a great sacrifice. Oh, okay, well, um, that's hard. Uh, a nail, a toe, a finger. A little toe, it's useless. Who wants um, to sacrifice a toe? How, my character will sacrifice part of his finger. Which part? So, so like, he'll go from like right here, don't worry, it's it's my ring finger, um, like right here. All right. I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so you sacrifice the ring finger and the metal creature uh, gestures for you to take the scale and the ring finger and place it in his hand or its hand. Do you do so? Sure. Okay, it closes its hand and places them in an alcove in the cave. And then it starts to turn the metal wheel. You notice that high up in the roof of the cave, there is a cage. And the cage lowers down on a chain. Inside, you see a strange creature, which has, it's about the size of a monkey, and it has a hundred eyes on its body. And the creature, the, the metal being says, speak, Sybil, speak your two prophecies. And then 
the Sybil speaks. One to the wise, he had a strange dream to collect of all monsters, one of every kind, and for each creature therein to learn the remedy and know best how to heal it and protect man from its wiles. He dug the earth and made the chambers, like unto the bee, but filled not with honey, but with monstrosity. Ye collected he the monsterarium of one to the wise. All monsters had he there, fierce breathing dragon and sphere of many eyes. All freaks teratological and bizarre, save one, that fell and foul beast called Madness Hound, whose drool causes those it bites to run mad, and one too dicey with the lords of hell to obtain one such pup of the licorice breed of Madness Hound. And grinning at the completion of his task, vainglorious one too was bit upon his left thumb by Madness Hound. Then one too the wise became one too the mad and spoke, monsters be free and harry suffering mankind. Let slip ye monsters and do thy monstrous will. And now his chambers are a source of ill for man and elf. So the seven rivals in armor shining placed the rock upon the entrance to the monsterarium. And yet within it, Wantu and his monstrous pets seek endlessly a way to free themselves. We need a way to find Wantu and call his wandering wits back to his soul, else mischief and monstry will be leased upon this world from the monsterarium of Wantu the Mad. And I'm gonna copy that prophecy, the first prophecy into your um, chat window. Wait, so it was the dog that planted the flower? Uh, um, am I right? The madness dog, I think, or the mad dog or something. It was cruel yeah. and making people mad. Give him a minute, he's typing. Yes, I'm doing a little copying and pasting. Wait, I could have the sacrificed my head. The rain has sacrificed. begun. Uh oh. That's uh -oh. bad. Wait, I could have sacrificed my head if I cloned myself. Hmm. Just get the magic jar spell, swap bodies with someone, sacrifice your old body. No, I meant like you, there's a spell that you can clone yourself, and I could have sacrificed my head, and you could have it, taken it. And, if you're vulnerable, I mean. Well, that's too bad. Weird. Um, I'm having some trouble making my cut and pasting from my Google Doc into Zoom. Does Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V doesn't work? Let's try that. Let me try that. If, I thought if it it's could... too, if it's too big, you might be able to just copy parts of it at a time, and in multiple messages. That could work. Well, let me see if I can get any of it. Ah, that's true. Okay, it was too big. So that's the first part. That's the second part. That's the third part. And here's the final part. Okay.
And then the metal being says, through the loss of the finger, you have earned one more prophecy. Speak, Sybil. And then she says, drive past the confusion and you will find the solution. It's plain to the sea for those whose wits seek truth and are not bashed to bits. Years or days or months of ignorant time, they see the solution is plainly there in this rhyme. Even though fools miss it, their ship may founder, and those who seek it elsewhere will be lost and wander. And I'll copy that for you as well. The second prophecy. Hey, if we need more prophecies, I have nine more fingers. Um, the creature says, um, Um, the prophecy is over. My mistress is old and tired. And he starts turning the um, uh, wheel no. and the, the cage starts going up. But as it does, you, the Sybil says, Talos, not so quickly. Let them ask one more question. You're tired, mistress, you're tired. I want to answer one more question. And she starts disappearing up. Um, do you ask one more question? Um. What ship? Do we need to get a ship? Where, where's the cheapest place to get a ship? Something like that? I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff she out. Says, Drink the tea of the poppy. Drink the tea of the poppy. And then she disappears. And then the man made of metal wearing the toga says, the prophecy is ended. My mistress is tired. My mistress has suffered long for this planet. Soon her prison sentence will be over and she can return to the stars from whence she has arisen. Leave the cave. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting aliens. So, so we're leaving now, right? Okay, you guys leave the cave. Wait. What do you Did do? Did we spell check the gold? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Uh, let's see. I can, uh, I guess I can trap check, or who's a um, thief, they can trap check. Wait, where are you checking for the trap? Uh, the gold. What gold? He want, he want to see if they're like enchanted or something. Oh. Oh, I can do that. If it's enchanted, I can do that. There's millions of enchantments and millions of traps all over the place. It's almost like every every spot in this cave is full of dangerous yeah. traps and enchantments beyond okay. your power to understand. So that begs the question, did the guy get mind controlled from the tea or was it from like trying to steal some of the treasure maybe? Good question. That is a very interesting question. Okay. Someone grab some of it to find out. We no, have, no, no, that does not sound smart. Okay. We I have, can clone myself to get a clone. We have about five minutes left to this session. Let me know what you want to do regarding uh, the Monsterarium of Wantu the Mad. Do you uh, wait, I thought this was going till 6.30. Going till 6.30? I don't that, know if I heard. I didn't know we were going to 6.30. Let me check. Am I the only one who thought that? I'd just That's like to say, uh, since Tay's character was outside the whole time, my character is just going to fill him in on what happened inside. Smart. Not smart. So he's not like, so what happened? Oh, we're not telling you. Um. Um, 
I believe this ends at six, not at 6.30. But in any case, whether it ends at six or at 6.30, what do you do now? Um. Someone needs to drink some wait, coffee. Wait, wait, if we, uh, one of you guys can already take it because I already cast um, a curse spell and an invincibility spell, so nothing would happen if you took it. Work with the bobbies. On those spells. Huh? How long do the spells last, though? Oh, they last till you use it. I mean. Uh, I'll take it. You're going to drink a tea made of the poppy? Yeah, unless anyone else wants a turn. Because, like, I also sacrifice the scale, so, like... I mean, we can all take it at the same time. Yeah, no, that, that, that doesn't sound that smart. So. Let's make a pact to all drink the tea at the same time. <laughs> that, that, that is not... You also can't be alone. You also can't be alone because you can't fight all the monsters alone. Yeah, but like, wouldn't only one of us need to drink it so we know what to do? We should also be like careful for like side effects, so. If we're going to go in, do you want to enchant your weapon? Just if you're gonna go in. I thought we were just gonna drink the poppy first. What? She, she said to drink the yeah, tea. But if you yeah, but if you drink the tea, there's probably going to be millions of monsters. <laughs> yeah, you should probably enchant our weapons. All right. Okay. Well, so who's I can enchant all your weapons. Who's drinking the tea of the poppy? I am, unless anyone else wants to. Okay, only Brenda? Only if it's one. only Brenda, then what happens... Oh, I'll, I guess if, it's, if she's the only one who's going to drink it, I guess I'll drink it, too. Okay. Maybe Rob Carl wants to join in. I will also drink it. Okay, well, then I'll tell you what happens. Those of you who drink it fall fast asleep. While you're sleeping, a man appears in front of you in a dream. He says... I am one to the wise. Congratulations. You are entitled to a free night in one two's hotel of dreams and wonders. Have a night of rest on me. And remember, remember, beneath your pillow is a passage to a dungeon packed with treasure. If you have the strength to seek it. And then he gives each of you a free code. Raise your hand. And I needed to describe him, which I forgot. Um, he has red hair and a red mustache. And he's dressed in a blue robe with stars on it. In front of him, there are cages with strange monsters within them. Behind him, so many stars, red and blue and white. Um, he holds within his hands a globe of the earth and his teeth are extremely white, much whiter than any teeth you've ever seen in your entire lives. Um, and raise your hand if you went on the dream journey. We probably should. Okay, so this is Justin, Tay, and Brenda went on the dream journey? Okay. Wait, so what the one to the, wait, it, uh, isn't in the story he um they said one to the wise turned into one to the mad? Well, you have the story, so you can consult it. Brenda, Justin, okay. and Kay, right? Mm -hmm. Three of us. Okay. And we drank the magic tea the together. Morning. All right. So that's what's happened. You guys can talk amongst yourselves for a couple of minutes. Uh we're almost at the end of our time of this journey and this adventure called the Monsterarium of Wantu the Mad. You haven't met anyone who has identified him as Wantu the Mad. You have I met someone who has identified himself as Wantu the Wise.
Yeah, but if you read in the chat, it does say, and yet within it want to, and his monstrous pets seek endlessly and a way to free themselves. Yeah, sure the dungeon full of treasure is probably the dungeon full of his monsters. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Could be. Perhaps. Oh, and the other thing is he, he gave, gives you all, in your minds, a map of how to find his hotel. Okay? Okay. Thanks for playing, everybody. I'll see you at 6 p.m. Pacific uh, Daylight Time uh, one week from today on a Thursday. All right? Okay. Okay. Bye, guys. And totally Thanks, invite your friends if you have friends who you think would enjoy. Okay, bye bye. Thanks, bye. 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 Malan, can you save the chat?